So let's begin with the second part of our unit 8, that is devotional parts to the divine. Now, in the previous part, in the first part of the video, we studied about the two different movements that we will be studying, the second movement, that is Sufism. The first we studied about what is bhakti movement, what is bhakti and what, how, what are the different forms of bhakti. Then we studied about Narayanas and the Alvars and the philosophy of bhakti where we studied about Shankaracharya, Shankara and Ramanuj. Now let's start with the second uh, philosophy that is Basavana's Veera Shaiva movement. Now, in the Veera Shaivism, as we say, it is totally believed that about the disregarding the ideas of Brahmanism and uh, Brahmanical ideas and uh, removing the caste system and the treatment of how the women were treated at that time. So, the Veera Shaivism, the Veera Shaiva movement, basically was based on the caste system and the treatment of women at that period of time. It was on the connection of the early Tamil and the Bhakti movement and the temple worship. In turn, there was a reaction that represented among the people about how these movements need to be carried forward. Then there were uh, other uh, companions who held in the movement were the Alama Prabhu and Akmaha Devi. Okay, this, this particular movement of Veera Shaivism began in Karnataka and in the mid-12th century. They were also against the form of rituals and idol worship. So basically when we studied about the Veera Shaiva movement or Veera Shaivism, it is basically uh, stopping the caste system, uh, the idol worship, or uh, even the treatment, how the women were treated at the time or in the mid 12th century and even the stopping of different rigid rituals. Now the next we come forward to the saint of Maharashtra. Now when we speak about the saints of Maharashtra, there were not only one saint, there were many saints who led to the idea of bhakti. Now these saint uh, poets whose songs in simple Marathi continue to inspire people. So the saints of Maharashtra basically, uh, I mean, basically in the part of Maharashtra because they could speak the language and they could inspire people with their particular language because that was the language of the common people in Maharashtra that was Marathi. So the most important among them were Kyanishwar, Namdev, Eknath and Tukaram. All uh, as well as women like uh, Sakubai and the family of Chokhar Mela and who belong to the untouchable of the Mahar caste. So again from this we come to know that each and every Bhakti movement, be it the, the Narayanas or the Alavars or the Veera Shaiva movement, they basically led to one thing that is uh, not following the caste system and the rigid rituals that were coming from centuries. Now, uh, the regional tradition of the bhakti focused on the Bithal. Bithal is a form of Vishnu. Uh, this temple in Pandharpur as well as a notion of personal God residing in the hearts of the people. And the saint poets rejected all forms of ritualism, as I already told you. Outward display of pity and social dis differences based on birth. That means, again, it leads to the same thing that means disregarding or not following the caste system, uh, no rituals, no idol worship, all these, and no social difference. That means, uh, not following the caste system. In fact, they even rejected the idea of renunciation and preferred to live with their families. Yes, we have seen in many of the bhakti movement, they believe in salvation or uh, they believe in you know, renunciation or moksha as you say. But in the bhakti movement here in the Maharashtra, they also propounded that it was not only that it didn't uh, 
believe in renunciation they they rather they felt that in living with the life living a life with the family and being with the family and you know going on through all the highs and lows in the family sufferings or sorrow or happiness everything that is the form where you that is more important than leaving everything and going in uh, or renunciation or leaving the living the worldly life and going in the forest and meditating so they prefer that they should live with their families earning a livelihood like any other person while humbly serving fellow human beings in need a new humanist idea emerged as they insisted that bhakti laying in sharing others pain as a famous gujarati saint narsi mehta said they are vaishnavas who understand the pain of others so basically uh, till now that we have studied about the um, the bhakti movement till now about the about the poet the uh the saints of maharashtra or we the philosophy of bhakti or the vasavanas vera shaivism they only propounded that there shouldn't be any caste system no idol worship no rituals rigid rituals and the women should be treated properly and nicely among in the society the next is about the natpanthis siddhas and yogis now a number of religious groups that emerged during the period criticized the rituals and other aspects of conventional religion yes you have studied about in the previous chapters about buddhism and jainism where why people shifted to buddhism and jainism we studied that they were caste system the people were divided in among the caste and they were people like they were the brahmas the brahmanas or the, the brahmins they uh, basically uh, were the high class people and the low class people they don't know the language they common like they even speak in uh, sanskrit so the uh, the common language was pali or prakrit it was not sanskrit so it was very difficult to pe- of people to understand even the rituals and even the rigid rituals that need to be followed that is why people at that time they shifted to buddhism and jainism there is why they shifted because they found that religion to be uh, more connected towards people or they were more liked by the people as they were taught in the common language there were no caste system no division of caste no certain no strict rituals to be followed so here also there were people who uh, there was a period who criticized the rituals and aspects of conventional religion and the other social order using simple logical arguments among them were the natpanthis siddhasaryas and yogis they advocated the renunciation of the world to them the path of salvation lay in meditation on the formless ultimate reality and the realization of the oneness with it to achieve this they advocated intense training in the mind and body through the practice of yoga asanas these groups particularly popular among the low caste the criticism of conventional religion created the group of devotional religion and became popular force in the northern india so basically siddhas yogis and natpanthis they were people who criticized the rituals and other aspects of conventional religion rather they believed in meditating you know they they believe that we can attain salvation by meditating to a formless god there is no as in there is no form of god god is formless there has no forms so they believe that if we meditate in that ultimate reality of formless god we will attain salvation and how they used to meditate and do this by doing yoga asanas yo yog yo yoga that we all know about is a form of meditating and that is how you can they believe that it is how by practicing certain breathing exercises and certain yoga asanas that is what it leads to meditation and that is how we can attain that salvation following the ultimate reality that is a formless god and this became very popular in the northern india the next part of that we will study that i told you right in the beginning that was the bhakti and the sufi movement so now we start with the sufi movement sufi movement has 
uh, bhakti movement as well basically devotion to the gods one goddesses deities of hindu religion whereas when we talk about sufism it's again a way of worshiping god in the islamic way the saints had much in common with the sufis so much that they believe that they adopted many ideas of each other and what each other the bhakti and the sufi movement were quite similar to each other as they believed in what as they they pray to what they pray to god and god is one so even their forms like they had quite similarity among each other and how they worship god they also in the sufi also you will see as i will explain you they also uh, do lyrics means the music the dance the poem the poetry the dohas and same way as the bhakti movement was sufis were muslim mystics and mystics means uh, saints they rejected outward religious uh, religiosity and emphasis love and devotion to god again outward things that means rituals uh, idol worship uh, ill treating women all the the outward thing they uh, they uh, rejected those outward things and they only emphasize emphasis on love and devotion to god and showing compassion towards their fellow being islam propagated restrict monotheism or submission to one god monotheism again it is worshiping one god in the 8th to 9th century scholars developed different aspects of holy law that is shariat and theology of islam there are certain rules and regulations mentioned while the religions of islam gradually became more complex sufis provided with an admission dimension additional dimension that favored a more personal devotion to god the sufi often rejected the elaborate rituals and codes of behavior demanded by muslim religious scholars they sought union with god much as a lover seeks his beloved with a uh, with, with a disregard for the world yes it's it's one of the same thing as i just told you that Uh, whatever i told you that in the pers- the personal devotion to god is rejecting the outward thing and believing in yourself and believing in being humble being kind and as how as a lover seeks god as much as a lover seeks his beloved the same way they seek god as they love it like the same poet or the sufi composed poems expressing the feelings and a rich literature of in prose including the an, uh, uh, anecdotes and fables and developed uh, around them among them the group, uh, great sufi saints were the ghazali the rumi the sadi uh, like the natpati siddhas and yogi they also have ghazali rumi and sadi they also have elaborate practices they have trained you know methods of uh, zikr zikr is a chanting of name of a or a sacred formula uh, like in the in the beads right uh, even the hinduism they have those beads in the christianity they uh, do the they take the name of the lord even so same way even in um, in muslim also in this they have zik uh, zik that is the chanting of the sa- the name of and the sacred formula contemplation sama singing rock means dancing discussions of parables and uh, breath uh, breath control etc under the guidance of their master or peer thus emerged the silsilas of spiritual genealogy of sufi teachers uh, each following slightly different method of tariq or instructions or and ritual practices so they have different all they also they were against idol worship and they believed in collective prayers so you know that it was the both the bhakti and the sufi movement have quite similarity among them they also rejected idol worship they also rejected uh, not uh, ritual strict rituals and they believed in a uh, worship uh, uh, they believed they never believed in idol worship but they believed in uh, community prayers a large number of sufis in the central asia settled in the in hindustan in the 11th century and the process strengthened uh, the sultanate period and when several major sufi centers developed 
and the Chishti Silsila among them were the most influential among them. It had a long line of teachers like Khwaja, Moinuddin Chishti of Ajmer or Kutubuddin Bhaktiar Khaki of Delhi, Baba Farid of Punjab, Khwaja, uh, Khwaja Nizamuddin Olya of Delhi and uh, Banda Nawaz Gyasudaras of Gulbarg. The Sufis masters held assemblies or khan, khan or space. That means the house, rest house, house for rest for travellers, especially kept for religious orders. Then there were devotions, there were meetings, there were community prayers, all they used to take place. And they even, uh, they, sorry, they even uh, attributed Sufi masters and miraculous prayers could relieve others from illness and troubles. The tomb or the darga of a Sufi saint became a place of pilgrimage. Yes, there are many pilgrimage that are there like in Ajmer. As you say, they have a pilgrimage of Khwaja Moinuddin Chishti. They believe that their God, when they go to the God, when they pray, miraculous things happen. And it became a famous pilgrimage place. And thousands of people have faith and they come and worship these they come and pray in these dargas. So this was the second part of the chapter, and I hope you have understood the second part. I want you to read uh, the read this uh, chapter well, and I'll be giving the third part after this.